Today I would like to have a look at microchip radiators in motorsport and discuss why Ferrari, Audi and Porsche used them. First of all, what is a microchip radiator and how does it compare to a standard radiator? Standard radiators consist of a number of flat hollow plates where coolant can flow through. All these plates are arranged in a regular pattern above each other and metal fins are between them to increase the radiator surface. If we look at the airflow within the radiator in detail, it's basically like the flow over a flat plate. While the air is flowing over the radiator plate, a boundary layer is building up either side. Now, a thicker boundary layer means that the flow velocity close to the plate is becoming slower and slower. The longer the air is traveling through the radiator, the more the boundary layer is warming up and the temperature difference to the plate is decreasing. This is the general characteristic of standard radiators and now let's have a look at microtube radiators. As the name states, they consist of thousands of tubes with a very small diameter of less than 2 mm. Geometrically, the smaller the diameter of the tube is, the more surface area the radiator has. More surface area is more heat rejection. And there is another effect. Since the air flows around microtubes now, it creates a so-called Kármán vortex street instead of a traditional boundary layer flow. This vortex street is mixing up the cold and warm airflow within the radiator and is improving heat rejection significantly. In other words, if you take a standard radiator and swap the radiator net with microtubes, you can get more cooling performance with 50% less drag at the same time. Or you can get the same heat rejection for a smaller radiator with again even less drag. Other advantages are the lower weight, higher damage resistance because the microtubes will bend instead of crack if something hits them, less sensitivity to the angle that the airflow hits the radiator because the net consists of tubes and not of plates, they are easier to clean because of bigger gaps in the net, and as we all know if the fins in a standard radiator net are bent you can hardly bend them back to their original position, so the pressure drop of a traditional radiator will always increase over lifetime, that's why they are changed regularly in motorsport. The disadvantage of microtube radiators is manufacturing. Making sure to fit 10,000s of tubes properly so they can withstand pressure and none of them is leaking is a major challenge. Now, how did these radiators make their way into motorsport? Ferrari was developing microtube radiators together with a partner for F1. They used them for water radiators and intercoolers. The pattern of these radiators simply aimed for increasing the surface area. At this time Audi had a look at this for their LMP1 program. They tested radiators of the same supplier and confirmed the improved cooling performance, but Audi had the feeling that they could do better than this and they started developing microtube radiators. After they got it all working, they played around with different tube patterns and additionally improved heat rejection by using the Kármán effect as described above. These radiators were later used in the Audi R18. When Porsche joined LMP1 a few years later, the knowledge was transferred from Audi and also Porsche used these radiators in the 919. Unfortunately, this technology was never transferred to road cars due to high costs and after Audi and Porsche pulled out of LMP1, they stopped developing this technology. But today you can buy microtube radiators to upgrade your car and they are used in Indy cars. So I hope you enjoyed that and if you know any other cars that use microtube radiators, please let me know in the comments below.